Hi, this is Mrs. Allen, and in this video we are going to be discussing interpreting confidence intervals. So what do we mean when we say that we have 95% confidence that our interval contains the true proportion? Well, formally, we, what we mean is that 95% of samples of this size will produce confidence intervals that capture the true proportion. This is correct, but it's a little long-winded. So sometimes we just say that we are 95% confident that the true proportion lies in our interval. Our uncertainty is about whether the particular sample we have at hand is one of the successful ones or one of the 5% that fail to produce the interval that captures that true value. So let's look at our um, normal model, the bell-shaped curve, and in this area, the red colored area, this is the 95% confidence interval. Uh, what we think the real average is should be in here. Okay, it should fall somewhere in this area. If it does not, then it falls out here at the tails and that's the 5%, 2.5 on each side. Okay, so let's look at an example. Um, social networking sites such as Facebook and Twitter have become fixtures in the social lives of many people around the world. As a result, there has been a growing interest in the impact that they have on our daily lives and relationships. So there was a study done where they surveyed some U.S. residents and asked about their use of social networking sites. Of the 156 people that they asked, age 18 to 22, who use Facebook, 48 said that they update their status at least daily. Okay, let's find our sample proportion. To find the sample proportion, we take first the number of people that said that they update their status daily, which is the 48, and we ask 156 people. And if we divide those numbers and change it to a percent, our sample proportion is 30.8%. And that 30.8% is the people that update their status at least daily. Okay. So our first guess might be that this observed proportion is close to the population proportion P. But we also know that because of natural sampling variability, it is, the researchers had drawn a second sample of 156 young Facebook users. At roughly the same time, the proportion who update daily from that sample probably wouldn't have been exactly 30.8% like we got. So we would need to look at a confidence interval. And to get that, we use the standard error equation. So our standard error equation, SE, so the standard error of our sample proportion, so the P hat, equals, and it's the square root of our p hat times q hat divided by n, the number of people that we ask. And just a reminder, the q hat equals 1 minus p hat. Okay, so if we find our standard error, times it by 2, because we want to go out two standard errors, and um, add it and subtract it to our sample proportion, the 30.8%, we get a confidence interval of 23.4% and 38.2%. And let's look at this on our bell-shaped curve. So if we go out one standard error from our sample proportion, we would be about right here. And if we go out another, that's how we get the 38.2%. Same way here, going subtracting. One standard error would be here. The second standard error would be here, and that's where we get the 23.4%. So our confidence interval is 23.4% and 38.2%. So we are 95% confident that between 23.4% and 38.2% of Facebook users between the age of 18 and 22 update their status at least daily. Statements like these are called confidence intervals and it's the best that we can do. 
but we know that proportions can vary from sample to sample. If other researchers select their own sample of Facebook users who update status daily, each person's sample proportion would almost certainly differ. When they each try to estimate the true rate of status updating in the entire population, they'll center their confidence intervals at proportions they observe in their own samples. Each of us will end up with different intervals. Our interval guessed that the true proportion of daily updaters to be between 23.4% and 38.2%. Another survey might find 52 of 156 daily updaters and get a confidence interval from 25.8% to 40.9%. Still, another person could do the same thing and might find that only 43 of 156 who update daily for a confidence interval from 20.4% to 34.7%, and so on and so on and so on. So we don't expect that all of these intervals to contain the true proportion of young Facebook daily updaters. Some will be duds and some will be winners and capture the true proportion. So if we look at this picture, you'll see confidence intervals produced by simulating 20 different random samples. The red dots are the proportions of daily updaters in each sample, and the blue segments show the confidence intervals found for each. The green line represents the true rate of daily updating in the population. So you can see that most of the intervals caught it, but a few missed. So what can we say here? Well, we can say that confidence intervals are based on random samples, so the interval is random too. We can also say that the central limit theorem tells us that 95% of the random samples will yield intervals that capture the true value. That's what we mean by being 95% confident. Okay, so let's look at how to um, put this in on your calculator to find your 95% confidence interval. So you would start by pushing stat and then you would go over to test and then down to A1, press enter, and these things will come up that you're going to fill in. X is the number of yeses or successes that you have, N is the number observed or people that you ask, and C level, this is .95, this is the 95% confidence interval that you'll be using. And then you go down to calculate and you press enter. So let's, um, Try this on your calculator in a second when we have an example to look at. Okay, so let's look at an example. So what is the 95% confidence interval if you ask 799 US teens if they misrepresent their age online to gain access to websites? And 392 of them said yes. So the first thing we wanna do is find the 95% confidence interval. So let's look at our calculator to do that. Okay, so here's what your calculator looks like. And the first thing we do is push stat. So you're gonna push stat. And then you're going to go over to test. And then down to A1, okay? And we're gonna press enter. And then here's where we're gonna type in that information. So X, is the number of successes. So we had 392 teens said that they do do that. And then our N will go down is the number we observed was 799. And our C level, we want 95% confidence. So we're gonna leave it as 0.95. And we're gonna go down to calculate and press enter. So our confidence interval would be right here, and we would just take this number and times it by 100 or move the decimal over two places, so we would have 45.6% to 52.5%. And then our um, sample proportion, which is just the 392 divided by 799, change this to a percent, we have 49 0.1% here.
Okay, so we have our answer down here. Our confidence interval is 45.6% to 52.5%, and our sample proportion is 49%. So the next thing I want you to answer is interpret that interval. So if we want to interpret the interval, we would just say that we are 95% confident that if we were to ask all U.S. teens whether they have misrepresented their age online, between 45.6% and 52.5% of them would say they have done that. Okay. And the next question is to explain 95% confident. So if we want to explain that, we would say, if we were to collect many random samples of 799 teens, about 95% of the confidence intervals we construct would contain the proportion of all U.S. teens who admit to misrepresenting their age online. Okay, so how about you try this one on your own, and um, when you're ready to check your answer, restart the video and we'll go over this problem. Let's look at this problem. What is the 95% confidence interval if you ask 1,229 U.S. adults if the trend of more single women having children is a good thing? And 49 of them said yes. So I want you to first find the 95% confidence interval, then interpret the interval, and then explain the 95% confidence. So we'll do it um, the long way first and then with the calculator. Actually, let's do it with the calculator first. Okay, so I have the calculator pulled up here and we will find our confidence interval. So first, remember, we click stat and then we go over to test and down to A1 and then press enter. And then we enter in our information. There were 49 that said yes we ask 1,229 people and we want to leave the confidence interval because we want to at 95 percent and we're going to go down to calculate and press enter. So if we change this to a percent we would have 2.9 percent to 5.1 percent and our sample proportion would be roughly 4 percent. So our confidence interval is 2.9% to 5.1%. Our sample proportion, proportion is 4%. Let's go ahead and find this the longer way without the graphing calculator. So here's our main information. We asked 1,229 adults. 49 of them agreed and said yes. So the first thing we want to do is find our sample proportion. You just take how many said yes, 49, and divide it by how many people you ask. We get this number right here, we want to change it to percent, so we could round it to 4%. So now we need to find the standard error of the sample proportion. So our p hat is 4%, so we're going to put in 0 0.04. The q hat is just 1 minus p hat, so that gives us 0.96. We divide that by how many people we ask, our n value and we get 0.0056. Okay, the next thing we want to do, we want to take it out two standard errors in each direction. So we're going to times that number by two and get 0.0112. We want to go, if our bell-shaped curve looks like this and our P is here, we want to go out two in this direction, so we're going to add it to our p hat and we want to go out to in this direction so we're going to subtract it from our p hat. So we're going to do that next. We have 0.4 minus our 0.0112 and 0.04 plus 0.0112 and we get the same thing that we got on the calculator 2.9% and 5.1%. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, our question asks us to interpret the interval. So if we interpreted the interval, we would say that we are 95% confident that if we were asked, if we were to ask all Americans what they think about the trend of more single women having kids, between 2.9% and 5.1% would say it is a good thing. So the next thing we want to do is explain 95% confidence. 
So if we were to explain that, we would say that if we were to collect many random samples of 1,229 Americans, about 95% of the confidence intervals we construct would contain the proportion of all Americans who would say that the trend of more single women having kids is a good thing. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it helps you understand interpreting confidence intervals just a little bit better. Thanks.